The Golden State Warriors might have finally done it. They have pretty much guaranteed a top six playoff position, and I'm here to tell you, a home playoff series might not be off the cards. However, before we talk about that, this is the Jordan pool the Warriors need heading into the playoffs. Clay Thompson setting up pool D3, and he got it. Pocket seven. Pool shed some space, feet set, three. Where does it live to do it against him? You're doing something. Pool to Jermichael Green. That's the passing we've seen from Jordan the last couple games. It's easy to forget how important JP was for the dubs in the playoffs last year, including dominating against Denver and posting 31, 8, and 9 in game one against Memphis. Yes, those numbers actually happened, and that was en route to the only road win of the series and the most crucial win of the series against Memphis. It's this exact reason the Warriors need him back to doing what he does best, and his performance against Philly showed exactly what he can do, dropping 18 points in the fourth quarter. After not hitting a single two-point shot in the first three quarters, JP went to work in the last. Here he is using a Dre screen to get the switch, and look at the quick change of direction, which leaves Paul Reed stuck in quicksand out there. Or how about against Embiid? A bigger paint presence than Reed, what JP does here is really smart. He recognizes he can't get straight to the rim, so he slows down for just a second before faking a pass and then accelerating past Joel. Just as importantly as his ability to get to the rim, Paul is starting to shoot more consistently from three. Over the second half of the season, he's shooting nearly 37% on over seven attempts a game. And it's his three-point shot, which is the difference between scoring 10 to 12 points off the bench or going off for 30 like he just did against Philly. And JP is just one of the many reasons why the Warriors remain a championship threat. And if you're wondering why I'm not too bothered about their inconsistent regular season, has everyone forgot how they ended last year? Over the last 28 games of last season, the Warriors went 12 and 16. Just to put this into perspective, that was the worst record of any team to make the playoffs last year over that stretch of games. Dead last, only to go 16 and 6 in the playoffs and look like a dynasty. And if you want to hear another reason why they're still dangerous, last year they went 11 and 1 at home. Everyone is focusing on the Warriors' struggles on the road, but if they are unbeatable at home, that just means they have to win one out of four games on the road in each series to advance. And if it goes to a game seven, I think I'd probably trust the team with four championships and a guy named Steph Curry. Because Steph Curry has really struggled since returning from injury. He's only averaging 30 points, six rebounds, and six assists on, you guessed it, pretty much 50, 40, 90 shooting splits. But forget about his scoring for a second. His 13 assist game against Dallas was a reminder that he's one of the best playmakers in the league. I mean, the guy did average close to nine assists a game as a 25-year-old. Just watch the mastery of Steph on this play. He spins one way and then comes back the other way to get around the Dre screen. Steph then moves to the right to keep Bullock on his back before drawing Wood with a slight hezzy and then feeding Dre. Or how about on this play where J. Mike is able to set a screen 30 feet from the basket because, well, it's Steph, and once Kleber commits to the ball, he drops a perfect dime to Green for the dunk. And this is one of the many reasons Steph is so unique. He's probably the best pick and roll player in the league, but instead of monopolizing the ball on every single possession, he allows the likes of Paul and Clay to handle the ball at times, whilst causing havoc off the ball. Speaking of causing havoc off the ball, the Warriors have someone who's generational at doing that as well. And I'm not talking about Clay Thompson. Aside from the unnecessary fangirling over LeBron James, Draymond remains pivotal to the dub's success, and the only reason his importance can sometimes get overlooked is he's not as good as he once was. But don't get it confused, he's still as good as anyone in the league defensively. Look no further than the game against Dallas, where Dre had a casual three steals and four blocks. And there is not a single player in NBA history that is better at doing this 
than Draymond. Green has the ball in transition. DiVincenzo is guarding him, so Dre signals to Dante to cover Bullock before then managing to shift his feet and blocking the shot while simultaneously yelling instructions at Dante. Or how about on this play where Dre stunts at Kleber before recovering all the way to Holiday in the corner and blocking his shot. You could look at just his highlights from this game against Dallas, and you would find half a dozen plays in one game that most elite defenders would be happy to have over the course of a season. And there's also another green that I do want to shout out. Jermichael Green. Now don't click off the video just yet because I know I'm talking about Jermichael Green, but just take a guess at what percentage Jermichael was shooting from three the first 20 games of the season. If you guessed 18%, if you guessed he was unplayable, you were correct. Since then, he's shooting 45% from three, only on 2.2 attempts per game, but just having another big body on defense and someone who can stretch the floor plus catch lobs has been really beneficial. And the Warriors bench all of a sudden looks pretty good because aside from the game against Philly, Jonathan Kaminga has been incredible since the All-Star break. Everyone wants to talk about his potential, but he's a crucial piece for the Warriors right now. Not only can he guard the likes of Luka Doncic and force turnovers plus bad shots, but offensively Kaminga adds a completely different dynamic for the Warriors purely because of his combination of athleticism and finishing ability at the rim. You then mix in the improved decision making out of the pick and roll, which includes making kickouts to open shooters, and forget about five years from now, Kaminga will play for the dubs in the playoffs. Now we're unsure what's going to happen with Wiggs, but if he is to return, that'll mean Dante goes to the bench, and this is without mentioning there is a very certain lockdown defender set to return as well. GP2's got the steal, running with Damian Lee. GP2 to float it up and in. For game, but he's got to take it personal if they're going to defend him with a smaller perimeter guy. Oh, Gary Payton with the flush goes right at Bain. Let's not forget, Gary Payton II had six steals and was a plus 34 in games five and six of the NBA Finals. Rumor has it, Jalen Brown still has nightmares about GP2 because I'm not sure there is another player in the league that can make a play like this. Brown beats GP2 on the initial back cut before spinning backwards and somehow GP2 rips him whilst he's spinning. How does that even happen? And it's this exact reason the dubs were so desperate to bring him back because of what he could do in a potential series against the likes of Devin Booker or De'Aaron Fox. I mean, I'm already picturing Devin Booker crying as GP2 puts him in clamps all series long. If you did enjoy the video, a like would be greatly appreciated. Subscribe to the channel for more. Have a great day. Bye.